Greetings. I wish we were actually in Parker Hall. It is such a special place where so many memorable events have been held, from concerts to plays to talent shows and even chapel services. But for now, let your imagination take you there. We are thrilled that so many Woodstock alumni from around the world are able to join us for the FWS WOSA Virtual Reunion 2021. Sadly, because of the pandemic, we can't gather together in person, but this format will allow more alumni to attend. My name is Aman Singh and I'm from the class of 2022. I have been at Woodstock for one year. And I'm Ms. Halinya Tsurho, also from the class of 2022. I've been at Woodstock for five years and Aman and I are honored to be hosting this virtual reunion. Parker Hall will serve as a virtual venue for our reunion which will be held over three days, from July 30 to August 1, 2021. This part of the program is pre-recorded. Every day we will host an hour of presentations and performances. To start things off, please welcome Bruce Davis, president of Friends of Woodstock School, who will make a few opening remarks. Welcome to the 2021 Friends of Woodstock School WOSA Virtual Reunion. I'm Bruce Davis, class of 1973 and president of Friends of Woodstock School. Welcome to a weekend of friendship and celebration of our Woodstock experience as we gather together virtually this year in Parker Hall. Here in North America, we've had annual reunions of Woodstock alumni almost every year since 1986. Normally, we've held these reunions in the summer. Last year, we met in Tampa, Florida in January. That was our first winter reunion. This is our first virtual reunion. The purpose of these reunions is to have fun and rebuild bonds of friendship. I'll give you a very memorable example of this. At our 2014 reunion in Baltimore, we had a DJ playing a mix of pop and Bollywood hits one evening after dinner. Tom Alter asked the DJ to play a tune from Shole. Shole was a blockbuster Bollywood hit from the 1970s. The DJ played Ye Dosati. Tom hopped on my back, the lyrics rang out, Ye dosati ham nahi torenge. We acted out the song. If you can imagine Amita Bachchan and Dermendra riding motorcycles around the countryside singing to each other, that's basically what we were doing. It was a blast. We're going to have some fun at this reunion. You'll hear stories of Parker Hall, stories of how I came to Woodstock hiking stories, and much more. Part of our reunion consists of pre-recorded videos and part of it will be live. We also have a silent auction going on throughout the weekend with some really cool stuff to bid on. Be sure to check it out. All proceeds from the auction go to our Woodstock COVID relief fund. A lot of work and planning has gone into making this reunion happen. Sharon Sito, class of 1979, has chaired a planning committee about a dozen alums who along with David and Connie Wheeler and the FWS board of directors have been busy putting this reunion together. You'll have a chance to hear from committee members over the weekend, but now I want all of you to meet the other FWS board members that work together to support Woodstock and our alumni community. Howdy, I'm Steve Van Rui, class of 1968, and I am on the Friends of Woodstock School board. I'm the treasurer, and you probably have some wonderful memories of Parker Hall. I'm looking forward to hearing about some of those memories, but. I have some great memories of things that happened in Parker Hall, drama, uh, talent shows, chapel messages, 
and so on. Looking forward to seeing you at the virtual reunion. My name is Sharon Seto, class of 79, and I work on the alumni committee, and I'm so glad that you can join us today. Hi, I'm Suzanne Turner Hannaful, class of 1963. I'm so glad you could join us for the 2021 virtual WOSA reunion. I'm a board member of FWS and on the reunion committee for our virtual reunion. And just put in a plug for our auction. Be sure to look at our silent auction and bid off it and bid high. Thanks and have a good time. Hi, I'm Glenn Conrad, class of 1968. I am a board member emeritus, which means I don't get a vote and I can never leave, but I can talk all I want, which is sort of the opposite of the way it was in Parker Hall back in the day. Hi, I'm Stephen Halter, class of 74, and an FWS board member. I'm also curating these pre-recorded sessions for the reunion. And I'd like to thank a number of people who have been uh, very active in helping us put this program together. First of all, David and Connie Wheeler uh, at the FWS office, uh, also Akshay Shah at the Hannaful Center, Christian Gutti, interim director of development, and uh, more than anyone, I would like to thank and introduce Renu Oberoi, who is the coordinator for our pre-recorded sessions. Greetings, my name is Renu Oberoi, and I'm the coordinator for the pre-recorded content for this virtual reunion. At this time, I'm here to introduce two of Woodstock's most recent alumni from the class of 2021, Kahini Patel and Aran Neil Suarez, who have served as interns for the Development and Alumni Relations Office this past year. Hi, my name is Aran Suarez. I'm a current uh, graduating senior as part of the class of 2021. I've been at Woodstock for four years and um, I was the former head of the Alumni and Development Department internship. And my favorite memory from Parker Hall is playing the drum set for both the staff musical and the student musical. This was, of course, before we start, we went uh, virtual. Hi, my name is Kahini. I am I'm from just outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the U.S. Um, I am one of the class reps for the class of 2021, and I'm also the head intern at the alumni office. Um, one of my favorite memories from Parker Hall has to be um, when my grade organized the talent show in grade 10. It was a really memorable event and it was so fun to put together and um, have that be something that we did as a class. So that's probably my favorite memory. Please, ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please. Hi, I'm Iris Hunter from the class of 1971 and I'm going to take you on a walk down memory lane, or more accurately, a hike on Zigzag Road. My parents, Richard and Evelyn Hunter, were artists and saw interest and value in even everyday items, and so have left me with a legacy of memories. I hope you'll be singing their praises at the end of this presentation. I think we can all agree that Woodstock Sale was one of the most exciting and delicious events of the year. There was so much happening that in 1956, my dad was asked to draw a map of all the events and stalls. If you overindulged in hot dogs, ice cream, and American candy, the cure might be found in this well-aged bottle of Paragoric. Sports Day was also a triumph of athletic skill in marching. Remember making these badges to wear when you were a chut, marching to form the W on Hanson Field? There were many wonderful events during the school year, some were for individual classes and were often held off campus or at the community center. Here we have a hobo party for the class of 1970 and a circus party for the class of 71. The invitations are drawn by my dad. The community center also housed a wonderful library. Coming across this brought back the memory of the musty smell of old books, 
a shaft of sunlight with sparkly dust motes, and the sound of the pen nib scratching on the bottom of the glass inkwell as you prepared to sign out a book. Going to the bazaar was always a treat. We went for food, shopping, to see a movie, or even have an illicit drink. If you bought roasted peanuts or fresh pecoras, your old school notes may have been returned to you in the form of a paper bag. Things were simpler then. Coolies carried chits and vendors brought their goods to your door. If you had a telephone, the numbers were easy to remember. Our number at Zigzag Cottage was 219. Parker Hall was the scene of many fantastic events and performances. The hobby show was always fun. And here is a picture of Advent windows painted by my father in 1958. We heard amazing music, saw wonderful performances, and unparalleled acts at the talent show. Food was always so important. The tuck shop was a favorite. And at the top of the hill, Prakash provided many delights. His line of foods were named Tangiji by my father, who also drew the labels showing Krishna enjoying them. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our little hike. If you tripped on the path and had a tumble, I'm sure the Landauer Community Hospital still has your medical notes on file. They can even write you a chit to excuse you from your next class. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to have a cup of chai with you soon. Goodbye. Awesome it was not a word we used in those days, but that is what Parker Hall was for a six-year-old joining Woodstock in 1942. In the years that followed, this space would carry all that fun, the glorious music, the plays, the noisy election campaigns, all the wonderful events, each of which had its own protocol, symbolized by those heavy brown and gold velvet curtains that were operated by muscled seniors, or hefts as we call them, entrusted with the backstage technology by the school. Because Parker Hall was also where Woodstock taught you the responsibilities of growing up. Where you sat indicated your place in the Woodstock hierarchy. Noisy chuts brought up from the quad could be kept downstairs in front or sent up into the balcony for solemn occasions from where from those commanding heights Parker Hall's decorum could be maintained at least in theory. You remember those chairs right at the end of the balcony a couple of chairs overlooking the speaker's podium below those prized chairs could sometimes be seized by mischief makers, like the one in our class who aimed spitballs at a divine who was raining fire and brimstone on a Sunday congregation. Stern warnings followed the class from the authorities because Parker Hall was also a place where you learned to behave, not just because you had to, because of the special aura this space had, a sanctity that was all its own. Parker Hall's ambience took over the minute you entered. You remember those tall windows facing a rock face that was imprinted by millions of years of evolution. There was also the knowledge that one day the Parker Hall doors would open and we, as a graduating class, would enter Parker Hall to the strains of Mendelssohn's Pilgrim's March, slowly, step by step, and walk up the aisle, parting at the head of the aisle in two directions, and regally mounting up to the stage and to our chairs. Vera Marley had prepared us after days of practice for that glorious winter evening when we greeted the world with our tears, 
our laughter and our joy as the graduating class of 1951. It was this very space that our class had decorated to befit the marriage of Bob and Ellen Alter, and it was here on this stage that Ellen and Vera Francis lifted us up to the glories of Shakespeare, Goldsmith, and Shaw. From here, that great piano and so many choirs, bands, orchestras, and what have you, taught us to understand what making a joyful noise was really all about. But perhaps the special aura of Parker's Hall was also the legacy of the great man whose name it bore. After all, Alan Parker was the one who persuaded my parents to give Woodstock a chance. You see, I had been expelled at age six from a school in Allahabad. And Allahabad was where the Parkers, or Uncle Alan and Aunt Irene, as I knew them, used to spend their winter vacations. They suggested that I could be sent to Woodstock. And therefore, Parker Hall, in a very real sense, became a symbol of my refuge and salvation. Perhaps not quite what the missionaries of those times may have had in mind, but a reality all the same, that here on this hillside was shelter and welcome for all kinds, including for a delinquent kid from the plains who needed a caring school. Thank you. Hello Woodstock, this is Aditi, otherwise known as Dot from class of 2016. Uh, in a moment you're going to hear some of my music, so I just wanted to take a moment to mention how big of a role Woodstock played in the development of my musical skills. Um, I was in every single possible music society that there co could have been, um, and of course Mr. and Mrs. Oki were a huge part of my development as well. So a huge shout out to everyone at Woodstock and Thank you so much. Um, here is some of my music. She carries herself like she's somebody else And she doesn't sleep around But she makes her way around the room She sits on a shelf and sighs like it's hell And when you ask her why She lets out another sigh of doom Practically fly in a head. 
81. I'm here with my friends. I'm Sanjay Aran from class of 81 too. I'm Pinder Bangra, class of 81. And this is the Landar Bakehouse, which is a replica of the bakehouse in Landar and here in the Scottish Highlands. Hope you guys come by and see it sometime. And in case anyone wants to have the Rokeby Landar experience in the Scottish Highlands, please come here. Nabil runs the Rokeby Manor in the Scottish Highlands. And there isn't one in Kenya. We are here at the Whispering Pine Lodge, Scotland. Just in case you lost your yearbook, you've got many in here. And we're planning to open a banquet in the hall, and the best name we thought was Parker Hall. Greetings to all Woodstock alumni around the world. Please do visit us here in Scotland. Yes, I'd like to say that uh, we'd love to have any alumni coming here and uh, you just have to contact us, say you're a Woodstock alumni, and we'll do all we can to host you in the best way possible and enjoy yourselves here. Take care and stay safe, everyone. Hello, Woodstock people. How are you people? You are doing well, I hope. Uh, so am I. Steve asked me to say something about my name, about Parker Hall. Uh, well, I joined Woodstock in 1952, which was uh, uh, straight from college. And I didn't know about which dog so much and I realized very soon that Parker Hall was a very important place where only people could uh, go on Sunday evening which was, which was a compulsory church for everybody uh, and it was strange watching the girls dress up very well with heels and everything and the boys would in their suits walking up all the way from Midlands to Wood to Parker Hall. My memories about uh, Parker Hall is uh, something which is very close to which PTA arranged and that was hobby show. Hobby show was all kinds of things. The high school kids who had different hobbies. You could go to the park hall. It was everything very well uh, arranged. And there would be stamp collections, butterfly collection, Beatles collection, and uh, cooking. All kinds of cakes were given there, and it was a big thing afterwards. The PT would arrange to give is a frog race. The kids had brought, and it was held in Parker Hall, <laughs> tied to a string, and they had to run. And the main oh. person who was managing this run, the race was Bob Fleather who was admired and loved by people. My other memories were when big, uh, important people were invited who were either famous or they had just come. Other than, I remember, uh, Carl Burke coming to visit when His Highness the Dalai Lama came I think in that commission she came to Missouri and she was a special guest in Woodstock. And she talked to the students because she had spent all her life in China, away from America, being a student and where her parents were missionaries. Uh, that sort of, I was reading about her those days, so it was very, very was something very special to me. The Dalai Lama himself was 
invited to Woodstock and he spoke at that time. He didn't speak English, so he had a John, uh, person who could translate what, whatever he was saying. And uh, that's how he spoke. He looked very young and, and uh, very innocent man. And he was. Vijay Lakshmi Pandit came when uh, Pakistan was born. And she was, I think, she was and she came to ask Woodstock to help collect clothes and all the refugees who had come to India from uh, East Pakistan. So she was one of those who were admired by many people. During the years, Bako Hall was used for many things, many important things, and people enjoyed her have enjoyed that day, going to attend a lot of nice things. I remember when Nasiruddin came with Tom Alter and they put up a play. At that time, Nasiruddin Shah was the main actor. And also I remember uh, uh, Brnalini Sarabai who came, who was the queen of uh, Bharat Natyam dance. And that was very enjoyable, and I remember that very well. And it's, I say it has still been used well, alcohol, and uh, it's a very special place where everybody enjoys it. I'm Paul Friesen. And I was at Woodstock from 1933 through 1940. I understand you're having an alumni reunion. It would be nice to be there, but there is no way under the present conditions. A story. Noon meals on Monday through Friday never changed for boarding students. Boys lined up at the south door of a, long of a long dining room, and the girls lined up at the north door. At the tap of a bell, we were all told to move in and stand behind the door at one of the tables. <clears throat> at the tap of the bell, the teacher was responsible to offer the prayer a blessing for the meal. And it was always the same for what we are about to receive. May the Lord make us truly grateful. Boys are boys. A prankster has a way of emerging out of thin air. A lad in the middle of a row of 15 boys announces, Kivy! In other words, watch out, as he held up the hanging tablecloth and made a trough into which he poured his tea. Each boy along the, the table was forced to lift his length of tablecloth and pour in his tea. The poor boy at the end of the table either had to duck or take a soaking. <laughs> the teacher had more on her hands than tapping a bell. End of the episode, the tablecloths were trimmed to hank only one or a little more inches over the edge of the table. Hello everyone, I'm Priya Kapoor, class of 1997. I studied at Woodstock from grade 5 to 12 and I was there from 1989 to 1997. I was three weeks short of my 10th birthday when I joined the school. I had grown up uh, listening about the school stories from my mother who had been at Woodstock for nine years. Also, I had read all of Enid Blyton's St. Clair and Mallory Tower books and I was confident that this was adequate preparation for boarding school. How wrong I was. 
August is the peak of monsoon in Missouri. I was miserably homesick. The food was awful. It rained all the time and I had to walk up a hill to get to school. And the teaching style was completely new and bizarre to me. Our fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Regal, would ask the class to gather around a large rug and sing songs to us. She would strum the guitar and teach us new songs pretty much every day. She was fun, kind, and motherly, not what I was used to at a school. She would read books such as The Hobbit to us and assign projects to recreate Bilbo and Smog. But most confusing of all, she would tell me, don't compete with others, Priya. Compete with yourself. Be the best version of yourself. Coming from an Indian school in Delhi where the environment was fiercely competitive, I didn't understand this. How could you compete with yourself? I mean, the whole point was to be at the top of the class, right? By beating others. It took me a while to understand. And today I would say that I hold this thought closest to me and try and apply it both to my professional and my personal life. Grade five was also a very transformative year for me because of my new school that fostered creativity, nurtured an independent spirit and opened my eyes to new music, books and to a sense of community and lasting friendships. I discovered incredible books at the Quad Library from C.S. Lewis's Narnia series to Judy Bloom's Are You There? Uh, God, It's Me, Margaret and from the Babysitter's Club to Paula Danziger's books. My, par my parents ran a publishing company, so books were a constant in our lives. But the kind of books that I was exposed to during my time at Woodstock made me look at stories in a very different way. These were not just the classics that we were used to and made to read. But this, we, I was exposed to literature from around the world, such as Albert Camus' The Outsider, Native Son by Richard Wright, Scarlet Letter by, Na, by Nathaniel, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Anita Desai's Village by the Sea, Glass Menagerie, Ma Madame Bovary, and so, so many others. I'm amazed that we read some of these as teenagers. Had we not been so ably guided by teachers like Miss Hoffman in our high school years, these books would have probably gone over my head. Uh, I too followed my parents in joint publishing. 2021 marks my 18th year in the industry. A story well told still excites me just as much as it did when I first joined publishing. I'm often asked, why should one read? I can think of many, many reasons, but the first one that comes to my mind is read because it creates empathy. In fact, this has been proven by many studies, especially amongst fiction readers. To be introduced to characters who live far away from your own reality, to feel for them and engage with them can foster understanding and empathy. The pandemic has been a terribly lonely and desperate time for many. It's been a difficult time in India with so much despair around us. Books have remained a constant for me during this time. They've allowed me to escape, learn and keep my brain functioning. This brings me to Woodstock. Uh, 20 years since I graduated, I realized one of the biggest lessons Woodstock gave me was empathy and understanding for others. Living together with people your age from around the world creates an easy tolerance. After all, we were more bound by our common problems, such as wanting more tuck, better food, more hot water, increased outings to the bazaar than who you worshipped or what your politics are. Uh, life has come uh, full circle for me. As I speak, I'm sitting in Fern Oaks, which uh, many of you may know as the Kapadia's home. Two years ago, my husband's parents bought it from Mrs. Kapadia, and during the pandemic, it's been a refuge for us. I spent a lot of time in Lando, and quite literally, uh, I'm surrounded by Woodstock. And this has led to a bunch of us setting up Wosa Asia. My mother was, my mother Kiran Kapoor was Wosa India president for a number of years in the 90s, and she's thrilled that I'm involved in rallying alumni once again. At WOSA Asia, our hope is that over time, we become an active body that helps alumni in the region and also supports the school in different ways. Before I end, I just wanted to um, introduce you to a short video that all of us at the committee, the WOSA Asia committee have made to introduce you to our goals and also to the committee members. So thank you and I hope all of you are safe and healthy and well. And I hope that we can all gather for a reunion once again on campus once things are better. Do you miss Woodstock? Do you have fond memories of your time there? Do you find yourself smiling when remembering something of your time at Woodstock? Do you feel like you want to give back to Woodstock? Each one of us have had the unique experience of either graduating from Woodstock or teaching at Woodstock. And some like me have been fortunate to be both. 
And we're here today to reach out to you, Woodstock alumni, to ask you to come forth in your support for Woodstock. October 31st is World Woodstock Day. And ahead of the date, we're glad to announce the formation of WOSA South Asia, a collective of like-minded Woodstock alumni in the region. There are more than 15,000 of us in the subcontinent itself. And we need each one of you to sign up and be a part of this group. What are our objectives? One, to help with the recruitment of both staff and students, to help raise the profile and reputation of the school, and to use South Asian alumni as brand ambassadors. Two, to create a network that supports alumni and also provides resources such as mentorships and internships for students. Three, to act as a resource for school events and festivals, inviting South Asian alumni to speak at these occasions and to expose students to opportunities and success stories in South Asia. Four, fundraising, in particular for community-based projects such as the Employees Children's Education Fund and other Woodstock related projects. And five, to improve communication and build channels between the school and the larger alumni groups in the subcontinent. It's easy to get started. Please fill out the short form to ensure we have all your information and please donate a minimum of a thousand rupees per year for WOSA South Asia to contribute to meaningful community projects. It's easy. All you have to do is fill out this form so that all your information is updated and we know how to contact you. And follow the Woodstock alumni social media accounts for updates, activities and know how you can get involved. So come, send us your ideas and stay connected. Because we know you have a soft spot for Woodstock and have special memories attached to the school. Because we know you cherish your experiences at Woodstock. Because we know you care. Come join the festivities on World Woodstock Day on October 31st and be a part of the larger Bosa community. Hello everyone. My name is Tae Kedichu. I'm from the class of 1999 and we called ourselves Utopians. I live in Kohima, the capital of Nagaland, a state in Northeast India, and teach in a government college. I've also set up the Center for Indigenous Knowledge and Alternative Learning, or SICL, where we work to collect all forms of Indigenous knowledge from Nagaland, as well as other Northeastern states. Nagaland is home to 16 different tribes and I am a mix of two of them. My mother is Sami and my father is Angami. I'm very excited to be part of this WOSA reunion. My eight years at Woodstock taught me many lessons, skills and values that have shaped the person I am today. One of these has been Woodstock's focus on understanding and respecting all cultures. And this has informed my personal and academic interest in my own Naga culture. As part of our celebrations, I would like to share a little bit about a project I started on social media in 2017. It's an Instagram account called Mekla Mama. Mekla is the word Nagas borrowed from Assamese to assign to the body cloth we Naga women wrap around our bodies. I made a decision in 2014 to start wearing meklas to work every day. And when I set up this account in 2017, I was already a mother of three. So mekla, mama, mekla mama. As an indigenous feminist, I'm very interested in women's narratives. As part of my work for Sickle, I have been collecting narratives around weaving and textile production. In Naga culture, weaving is the exclusive domain of women. In a very patriarchal society, our textiles are a storehouse of women's narratives woven in cloth. By creating cloths that assign identities to their wearers, male or female, married, unmarried, or conferring honor, status, and passing on stories of the community or the weaver, women enjoy a power of their own within this space. So when an elderly shop owner worried that the dearth of young women visiting her shop may discourage weavers from continuing their art, I also became quite concerned. 
I started this Instagram account to document my fashion experiments with indigenous textiles. My challenge to myself and to other Naga women was to see how we can expand the use of our traditional attire from costume and special occasions to every day and still indulge in our love for fashion. Because we can only keep them relevant if we are able to reincorporate them into our daily wear and increase demand for these exquisite and intricately woven items that are durable and can be passed on from mother to daughter or grandmother. Here I am wearing a rengma mekla that belonged to my maternal grandmother and an angami lohe that was worn by my paternal grandmother. Like many fashion lovers today who have begun to question the impact their lifestyles have on the environment, I also felt that our textiles could displace our use of other garments and move us from fast fashion to something more sustainable. Apart from trying to demonstrate there are the style value of our textiles. I also use this account to share narratives that I collect as part of my research work. I chose to wear my Angami Laura Mose shawl and my Sumi Lotus at the release of my second collection of poems to celebrate my mixed cultural heritage. This Laura Mose is a cloth that comes both as a shawl and a mekla and is worn by Angamis of northern Angami villages. While the shawl can be worn by both adult men and women, the mekla was traditionally worn only by unmarried women. Girls wore it with a white underskirt visible under their mekla and with a black one once they started menstruating. Because most of the body is woven with undyed cotton, keeping this cloth white and pristine from start to finish was, was a challenge. So this is the most special of all meklas for Angami women. I wore a Laura Mose for my high school graduation and then again on my wedding day. I will end by sharing one of my favorite personal findings with you. This is the Kyamnyongan Najan, and it is essentially an origin myth woven in cloth. The story goes that there was a big flood and people had to climb a mountain to avoid rising waters. As the flood subsided, they came down the mountain, crossed the waters to settle in the land Kyamnyungan inhabit today. The white motifs signify snow on the mountain, the blue the flood waters, and the red symbolizes the bridges they used to cross over. Thank you once again for this opportunity to share my work. I hope I've persuaded those of you who have been honored with gifts of shawls or meklas by your Naga friends to wear them out more often. Everybody. Thank you, Bosa, for inviting me to be a part of this virtual reunion. I've been asked to share a few stories from my time at Woodstock. 35 years is a long time to share stories in three to five minutes, but I will do my best. Uh, as you know, I joined Woodstock in 1983, and the interesting thing was that everybody that joined the Social Studies Department that year were new including our HOD. We had no idea how Woodstock functions, what was expected of us, but we did our best. And thankfully, everything went well. The first story I would like to share is Shin Shin's story. She was a student in 1990s, if I remember correctly. Uh, I was sitting outside the music department uh, on one of those benches. And she comes to me and she said, Miss Chandra, how old are you? So I said, not quite 40 yet. Then she said, you are the strangest woman I have ever seen in my life. I think she was in grade six uh, at that time. Uh, I said, why is that? She said, you say you're not quite 40 and you're all gray, almost all gray, and you're not married. But, and you're not that ugly, Miss Chandra. She said, but these men, they're very strange. They don't recognize the inner beauty and you are really beautiful inside. I had a good laugh and I, uh, you know, I just didn't know how to react to it. And I thought how cute she was, so open. And uh, one day we were sitting at Mr. Bradby's place over dinner and I, when I told this story, Mr. Bradby comes out, he said, must be Shin Shin. I was quite surprised that he knew each and every child by uh, their first name. It was very impressive. 
Now comes my second story and that is a contrast from the class of, classes of 80s at Woodstock to a young child at Woodstock in 2020 when I was there last year for one year. I was staying um, at guest room number one and these little children, a group four to five, they come up and they were running around and I went down out and I knew Charlie, Kirsten Bradby's son. Uh, I said, uh, I started talking to them. So this boy of 86, Bobby Singh, you all know him, hopefully. Uh, we were good friends also. After the graduation party, he comes to my house and he said, Miss Chanda, can I call you Shanila now? I said, no, you continue to be, I continue to be my te your teacher. And uh, the contrast is this little boy, Charlie, uh, when he was running around, I went out and just to chat with them and their teacher called them, come down, what are you doing up there? And he quite loudly says, we are just talking to Shanila. So that I found very, very uh, funny and interesting, uh, the change of time, um, whatever time, 30, 35 years uh, it was. Uh, well, uh, I think my time has run out. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this virtual VOSA reunion. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Hi, everyone. My name is Krishnan Kuti, and I'm the Interim Director of Development and Alumni Affairs. I've been in this position for the past 12 months. And now I'd like to give you a tour of the alumni office. The signage outside is very iconic, and many of you who've been here will remember the VOSA sign. We've just entered our office and as you enter to the right is another iconic graphic that was made during the 150th celebrations. It is the, the graphic is called Mountains of Appreciation and it captures the various donations that were made for the uh, 150th celebrations. Moving on on the right is the Joy Rue Memorial Bookshelf and this bookshelf has mm. Uh, copies of books written by alumni. Right. Further moving on is where Adi Manral, Aditya Manral sits. He's the alumni coordinator. Hello and welcome to the alumni office at Woodstock School. My name is Adi Manral and uh, I am the alumni relations coordinator. Um, I am mostly the first point of contact when you write to us an email or when you come to, to, come to the school, uh, we welcome you. Um, if you have any queries, Anything you need us to do for you from the school, we will be more than happy to assist you. Thank you. Panning to the left is the uh, Lie Tree Society um, sign. It has the names of various uh, alumni who uh, agreed to join the Lie Tree Society and be members. And then moving on further to the left is the table where Mrs. Roberts, Monica Roberts. Hey everyone. Sits. As you know, my name is Monica Roberts and I'm the alumni secretary. I have been in this position since uh, 2004, but I've been at Woodstock since 1979. And among the things that I do, I coordinate the publication of the Quadrangle, manage the archives, uh, coordinate with class secretaries on gathering information, plan class reunions, plan the Mela. We also manage the alumni souvenir shop, in pre-COVID days, I would also give uh, campus tours when possible and help alumni with logistics during their India visits. Uh, I've also worked a lot in the development uh, office part of the side of the office, uh, helped with the fundraising, uh, annual fund and uh, any other type of fundraising that used to take place. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all once again when travel is permitted and wish all of you uh, good health and stay Welcome safe. Come to my office. The uh, Director of Development and Alumni Affairs has typically been using this office at least for the past decade and it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, from having spent 11 years at the Hannibal Center, this past year in this office has given me an insight into Woodstock's alumni community and the amazing work that they do 
and we're extremely, extremely happy for the support that you all have and for the love that you show Woodstock School. This is going to be a presentation on the Woodstock School archives. And I'm Marga Warner Curl, class of 1967. And I'm Kate Whitcomb, the class of 1966. The archives were conceived of by the class of 1942. My mother, Dorothy Whitcomb, is a member of that class and is shown in this picture here, uh, along with my father, Bill Whitcomb. They began in 1996 to gather money from their class members to establish the archives. Once that was done, it coincided with my being appointed the Director of Development and Alumni in January of 1997. So in the fall of 97, my father was the first alumni volunteer who came to work in the archives. As the time went on, my husband, who also came with me to Woodstock, Jack Hines, did a lot of work in the archives, helping to uh, shelf things and get things organized. Throughout this project, we've had a great team. Joining Kate and me has been Lori Osborne, here, pictured here in the blue jacket, a friend of Kate's and a professional archivist. And we've had at least a dozen or more other volunteers over the years. Over the course of our five working visits, we have culled through piles of material and made do with an assortment of working spaces and inherited storage cabinets and tin trunks. A lot of the organizing required discarding things that were not archival and that needed to be disposed of. Members of the classes of 1966 and 1967 donated funds for new standard furniture, which was put in place in the fall of 2020. Um, you can see the vast improvement over some of the um, shelving that we showed in previous slides. And because this was done in 2020, it was during the pandemic and the file cabinets and shelving were actually in a truck waiting to be delivered for a period of at least three months before they reach the school. My main focus has been on the accessioning and organization of materials. We have developed a sim simple organization system and have now also have a printed finding aid. Here now is a small sample of photos and images of some of the wonderful items that are in the collection. records in the archives today that are the remnants from this fire and are in protective acetate uh, folders to keep them from being further damaged. to remark on this one document which is quite remarkable it's a large ledger 
that lists when each of us were admitted to Woodstock. It goes through until the early 70s, and Margot and I are both listed in the book at the appropriate places, but you'll see on this page Paul Copeman, and you'll see Robert Wagner. Um, there are also some interesting uh, Elizabeth Parker. Um, there's some interesting entries. One young woman, um, Felicia Bennett, her father was a justice in the high court in um, Delhi. There are, it lists all the employment of each of our parents, which is an interesting artifact. As we end the presentation, some of you will be wondering why some of this has not been digitized. And we have been working hard to organize the materials that we actually have. And those paper documents are going to outlive some of the digital formats that have come and gone in the years that we've been accumulating these things. Digitization is, of course, very expensive. And as formats change, it becomes inaccessible. But the paper documents are going to always be accessible if we keep them safe. We are awaiting the time when the school can take over the responsibility for the ongoing upkeep of the archives. But we have enjoyed all the work that we've done together over the years. Yes, it's been wonderful. And thank you for joining us. I'm Alex Manton. I'm from the class of 84. I went to Woodstock in ninth grade, and the reason I went is because it was essentially my family school. So half of my family were missionaries in China, and half of my family were missionaries in Burma. And to escape the Japanese in World War II, they, they went to India. Funny enough, they met in Almora, and I don't know why, and uh, there was no school. And, uh, in Almora and so they heard about this funny little school called Woodstock in Missouri and the whole family moved to Missouri in I think 1942. So when I was at Woodstock in ninth grade I spent most of my time in the library looking at a few different magazines looking at National Geographic looking at Geo and Raghu Rai's work in, in India, India today and I decided then and there in ninth or 10th grade that I was going to be a photographer. My interest in India obviously started at Woodstock, but it grew from there. And uh, when I was in university, I studied my, I guess it was my junior year in college through a study program in the U.S. that actually sent me to Benares Hindu University in Varanasi. I did three photo essays there and I studied Hindi and uh, it really, you know, they say Varanasi is Pakka India, and, and it really is. So it really got me into kind of the heart of India. That was a, a great experience. So it was at one, Woodstock 150 that I kind of reconnected with Woodstock. Then fast forward about 10 years, and uh, I think it was 2014, um, Woodstock needed some marketing help with videos and that sort of a thing, and that's really kind of the recent chapter for us. We did this series of videos and, and, and one of the videos was on activity week. And in the few weeks before that, we decided we're gonna do our own activity week and it's gonna be about filming. So we looked around the school to see what students were interested in video and um, several of them uh, were. So we took three students with us on, uh, on our activity week and we went to five different places so one day we went to a village with say grade 10 one day we went rock climbing with grade 9 and and we went uh, whitewater rafting on the Gunga it was Jonah and Aman and Tanuj 
And the, the neat thing is, is out of three of them, two of them went to film school. It was neat to be able to kind of see that interest in them for film and then that's what they're gonna end up doing or that's what they have ended up doing professionally. You know, when you're an alum, you ask yourself, how can I get involved with the school again? The obvious thing is donating money. But I think that there's m much more significant ways to get involved. And one of these ways essentially just kind of fell in my lap during this activity week. And that was essentially becoming a mentor. So I would encourage people I think, I think mentoring is a great thing that, that alums can do for current students or for recent alums, you know, ones that have graduated recently or more importantly ones that have just recently graduated from university, which is the time that they need things like internships and they need people to kind of take them aside and, and give them advice and that sort of a thing. A lot of schools talk about, oh, we're one big family. Woodstock really is and it's generation after generation. I would encourage people to just get involved in WOSA, to get involved in um, reunions wherever they are. I mean, they happen all over the world. And you never know what can happen there. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know what friendship you're going to rekindle. You never know who needs a mentor. I think you can experience that whole family thing, the Woodstock family thing, all over again and, and kind of ride that and experience that through the rest of your life. what we say would stop you known over all the land would stop you sung upon every hand hear many chances of
Rise to greatness and belief Space bound with talent Owned here with stock Keeping that love Your true home base This brings us to the end of today's pre-recorded program. Our special thanks to all the presenters and everyone who made this reunion possible. We'll be back again tomorrow. Be sure to join us for more presentations and performances as well as live sessions on Zoom. Don't over all the land would stop me. Sung upon.